Have you ever seen one of these? I would hope so. There's nothing quite American as apple pie, and nothing invokes that fall feeling more than apple cider or apple cider donuts. But what if I told you an apple very much like this one was a key piece of evidence in a string of murders that happened 100 years ago? On October 32nd, 1918, a group of six college students were murdered in cold cider by a man known as the Appler. Some of you may refer to him as the Coremonger, the Seedy Strangler, Johnny Deathseed. What we all know is that six lives were taken on that day. Twenty years after this, however, local business Granny Smokes pressed cider for millions of people. But not even six months after they opened, they ran into problems. My name is Cliff Hanger. My partner, pictured here, is Dylan Sprouts. We journeyed into the woods, not far from where you are now, to see if we could discover the truth as to if there was any connection between the murders that happened 100 years ago and Granny Smoke's fatal accident closing that happened 20 years after. This is our company, CD Productions, first and most likely last venture into the world of documentary. Please, open your eyes, and enjoy. Our journey toward the Granny Smoke Cider Factory took us deep in the woods. We knew, somehow, that we were being watched. But by who? <laughs> factory was well hidden, but Kevin, our anonymous source, told us that deeper into the woods, there was a vantage point on a log where we would be able to see the factory, mere walking distance from where we were now. As we approached a riverfront, we knew that we were getting close to the vantage point. As Kevin told us, it was, quote, near a river. So we continued onward, talking amongst ourselves about the potential dangers of such a trek, what we might run into, who might try to stop us. A lot of the tales that we have been told about this dreaded place were merely folklore and legends, but we had a feeling that we were about to dive into a world of endless torture. Once we reached the vantage point, we knew what we had to do. Aided by our trusty cameraman Jean-Claude, we ventured out onto the log to try to get a better view of the factory in the distance. What we didn't know was that this is when everything would change. As we reached the end of the log and started to get a sight of the factory, my partner Dylan was attacked and thrown into the river. We were just about to start filming when all of a sudden this. Sir, Dylan, explain. There's something out there. Who? Uh, it, it felt like, like a peel, and I think, I think the Appler is out here. 
I think he's still alive. We have to move. Whatever that was, it doesn't want us out here. It doesn't want us to uncover the truth. But we have to keep going now that we know it's real. At this point, it seemed like all hope was lost, but we had seen the factory and knew that it was close. We could not stop now, so we licked our wounds and continued onward, not knowing the horrors we would soon face. Our journey continued as we marched through the marsh, heading toward the factory. We were both scared, yet eager to find out the truth of what happened those 80 years ago, and if it had anything to do with the instance that happened 100 years ago. As we continued on, it seemed like everything was peaceful. That is when we saw a sign. A sign that told us we were not alone. We were being followed. But by who? The Appler? Who's to say? But we finally reached our destination, and we were ready to uncover the truth. Now that we finally made it to the old abandoned Granny Smoke's cider press factory, it was time that we finally exposed the truth. We find ourselves in front of the Granny Smokes Apple Factory. Abandoned, of course. In 1938, Granny Smokes Incorporated acquired this property, which is the alleged site of the initial instance that we are investigating. Six months after the acquisition of the property, however, Granny Smokes ran into problems. All of the apple cider they were pressing, no matter how pure and how much they filtered it, was coming out as blood. Human blood. Little is known about why the cider was turning into blood. But we're here to investigate if it had anything to do with the incidents that took place 20 years prior. We have no idea. I think I just heard something. Hey, follow me. Hey, we gotta get this. I think it's coming from the other side of this door. I'm not exactly sure what I heard, but it sounded distressed. There doesn't seem like a way in. The door has been sealed off, welded. Legend has it that locals reported sounds of what they could only describe as fruit screaming, innocent fruit being mangled, hours after the factory would close while still in operation. Although officials deny these reports, no one has debunked what those sounds were and if they were actually happening at all. And I definitely just heard a noise.
was that noise? Dylan? Dylan, where are you? Dylan? Dylan? Dylan! <laughs> <laughs> and just like that, he was gone. My best friend. My only friend. My partner. I don't know if he's dead or if he's alive. All I know is that he's gone, and I can't find him anywhere. We shared so many memories, both good and bad. All I hope is that he's out there somewhere, trying to find me as I try to find him. There's no way to know what happened to him on this dreaded day. All I know is that the Appler is out there, and he may have cored another victim in cold, hard cider. One day, we will stop the Appler, but not until I get my partner back. Whenever that day may be. But for now, it's just me. <laughs> <laughs>